Okay, I just arrived to my pickup. It says I'm driving. I want to change to on duty. Workflow, you're supposed to be on duty, at least for a couple of minutes. So we're going to go on duty, press OK. Now we're going to go to workflow. It's right there. Okay, they activated my pre-plan to my trip plan, so I'm going to go to trip plan. It's highlighted in yellow. We're going to go to details. You have to go to details first. And then we got to hit the tab up here. It says tasks. GPS arrived. It's already been done. But now we got to click on arrived. Select. Arrival time, 311. Write that down because you have to write down that exact time or after later on in your workflow when you pick up your shipment. It has to be the correct time or after. You cannot put anything before because it will not take it. So then we're going to press confirm. I'm 11 minutes late. So he usually asks me, why are you late? Give a reason. I was going to write one of the options is personal. I was going to write the freeway was closed. I had to reroute. But it didn't ask me, so maybe my appointment isn't at 3, maybe it's later. But dispatch told me 3 a.m., so I'm here at 3.11. So that's how we arrive. Later on, after we get loaded, we're going to do everything in bold. We're going to do pickup. We're also going to do detained. It's not in bold, but that's how we get paid detention from what time we got here, 3.11, till we get out of here. It's going to ask us what time did we pull into the dock, so write that down. Final pickup, checkup, checklist, and departed. We'll do those when we're completed getting loaded. So... We're going to turn, pause this video off. I got to pull in. I'm going to go into the shipper, tell them what I'm doing, where I'm going. They're going to tell me what dock to park in. This is a live load. We'll get back to you. Okay, so we're pulling in the gate right now. I already know where to go. I've been here plenty of times. Most of our shippers are very easy. A lot of room to back in. We do a lot of warehouses, mainly warehouses. Um, so. Plenty of room to, to back in and park at most shippers. Right now, remember I was on duty when I logged in my uh, rival, and then I had to drive into the parking lot, so now my log is saying I'm in driving mode, which is okay. I'm only gonna drive for a couple minutes. But when I check in, you know, to the shipper, I'm gonna go off duty, and I'm gonna creep around the yard, usually around under five miles an hour, which means four miles an hour or three miles an hour, and that will not start my clock it will not kick me back into drive time. So right now, I am going, I parked. I have to go knock on the door. So I'm gonna change it to off duty. And I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so what we're looking at is our pickup in the details. Shows right there on the tab, mode. Okay, so off of this, what I do is I take a picture of that. Well, let's go to the top. Instead of writing everything down to, to take my information into the shipper, on my phone, I take a picture of that. Take another picture of that. Take another picture of that. I take a picture of my trailer number and then I go in and see the shipper when they ask me a question. What's your PO or what's your pickup number? What's your uh, BOL? Where's it going? I also take a picture of this. They ask me where's it going? Where's it pick up? So I have all the information on my phone. That's easier than writing everything down. I do write some things down, but that's for a different purpose and I'll show you in a second. But that's what I take into the shipper just my phone and those photos. Now what I write down on my paperwork is date I pick up, the time, date I deliver, the day and the time. From where and to Ontario, California. My trip number, my trailer number, the one I dropped, the one I picked up in case Martin asked me what trailer did you drop? I have it written down. My arrival time, estimated dock time, my out time. That's it. This is for me, this is the way I do it. And then my paperwork, I go through it. I always write the trip number at the top. I highlight everything, the bill lady number, my trailer number, where's it going? Very important to check out where's it going. Make sure you got the right paperwork. I took the wrong trailer before. Now I double check. Destination, trailer number, everything. Uh, it's going to ask you in workflow number of pallets. If it has it, you highlight it. If not, I'll you're going to put in 99. That's like, I don't know what mark. But th I'll show you that later. I just highlighted description because sometimes they ask me at the uh, port of entry in California, what are you carrying? Well, I got medical supplies. Highlight the weight. Look for the temperature on here. You highlight that. And then I highlight, I write pickup, the date, in, in time, out time, how long it took me. Oh, 0.75 hours, which is 45 minutes, Carl, Carl C. That's how I do it. You also should highlight or circle the temperature. And I think it's right. Well, I don't have it on there. I have to look. But anyways, so you're going to pick up your trailer. Check the fuel. 
check the fuel on the one you're dropping too if you're gonna drop it you don't want to drop a trailer with empty that's empty at least a half if you drop it at Walmart and some customers they want three quarters or full so you never know so always have fuel in your your reefer check the, the fuel when you pick it up do a pre-trip on the on the trailer I check the load I usually don't use load bars hardly ever but this was double stacked the pallets are light so this time I put two load locks back there so let's get started with entering information so we're gonna go to tasks we already did our arrival now we're gonna go to pickup select now we got the information on our paper that we wrote down it says arrive with trailer my empty one is 24164 so I'm gonna put in 24164 did it have a washout no but I did blow it out the washout didn't need it washout location and A because I didn't get one I left with a different trailer when I picked up is 23948 23948 reefer level it was half so I'm gonna put in half okay what did I get here 311 if I put in 310, it won't take it. If I put in 312, it will. But I put in 311, because that's what it, that's what time I got here. What time did I dock? Okay. I docked about, I wrote down 3.30, close enough. Yeah, my computer don't work yet. Okay, what time am I leaving? 4.07. Any correct times? Yes. B-O-L. I try to find whatever one I can on the bill on the bill of lading. This one is actually right, so we're going to write in. It's right there, highlighted. B O L. That's actually what Martin had in. So that's what we're going to put in. Sometimes you won't have it, so you have to put the B O L. That's on the paperwork. So I'm going to put 100 triple two, 100 triple two dash D O B zero three hundred. Dash zero three hundred over here at Dexcom. If you notice, that's the date today. Date of birth, the third, ten twenty two. Amazing, huh? Okay, gross weight. It's on our paperwork. We highlighted it. Okay, BOL entered. Does not match plan BOL. Do you want to proceed? Okay. It's gross weight eleven seven hundred. These are always light here. The medical supplies. Number of pieces. Usually it says, and sometimes it doesn't. Let me see. Nope, oh, doesn't have pieces. So we're gonna write 99. I think at Martin, 99 is like, I don't know, or off. So I'll just put 99. Pallets, I have it, 30, it says 39, wow. Next page, seal, NA, I don't have a seal on there. I lock it. Forgot to check what my reefer set at. It set at 60, but I don't know if it set at continuous or cycle. Continuous means it stays on all the time. Cycle means off and on. So we're gonna click on continuous. Pallet charge, no. Loading charge, no. Was there OSD, no. OSD stands for overage, shortage, or damage. Does it load out place card, that's for hazmat, no. Temperature recorded on load, no. Seal intact, no. Set at, that's the temperature, 60, it's set at 60. The gauge says 60, then the BOL. On this page, it's only going to take the last five numbers. Only, you can only take, enter five in. So I'm going to just put 0300. That's four. Okay. It won't take no more than five. Press done. Okay. You always press cancel. That'll bring you back to this page. Detain. I was detained. It took me 45 minutes, so I'm going to put point seven five. You always have to put a reason. I was gonna write drop and hook. Usually I put waiting, because I'm usually waiting. And technically that's what I'm doing, I'm just waiting. It could be five hours to get loaded. Okay. Do the times match the BOL? Yes. Dock sign? Yes. Obtain, require docs? Yes. Scan docs? I'm gonna scan them right after this, so I'm gonna put yes. Did, did I break here? Yes, done. For the next one, final checklist. Man, this is gonna be a long video, but it's gonna be some great information for you guys. Okay, scanned in BOLs, we're going to do that right after this. You can do it before or after. Verified BOL number. Verified load locks, yes, it's secured. 
Seal on trailer, seal guard lock. Yes, I got my lock on there. Verified all POs picked up at dispatch. Yes, if necessary, scaled. Yes, I'm not gonna scale this one, it's too light. Place cards installed correctly. Yes, but we are using them actually. Those are all yes, if you're doing your job right. Here we go again. You're always gonna hit cancel, go back to that page so you can do your next thing. Departed, select. There we go. We're done picking up our shipment. A live load, the only difference is you'll be waiting here. This one was supposed to be a live load, but it ended up being preloaded already. So all I did was drop it hook, which is better for me, but okay. Now we're right here. What we're gonna do is highlight our destination. Oh, that for, so when we get there, it's highlighted already. But anyways, we're gonna go home, navigation. Now that our trip is activated, it'll pop up under dispatch. Okay, we're gonna go to this little home or house in the corner, click on it, go to dispatch. There's our pickup, we're already here. There's our destination, click on your destination. Make sure it's the right one. Yeah, I'm going to Ontario, get route. This is gonna give you the route on how to get to your delivery. Now put it on your phone also, just in case. So that'll all click in. Now, Martin wants you to fuel at the cheapest place. You know, we don't get any kind of fuel bonus for that, but it helps out your company. If you wanna be a team player, you do this, you're gonna get a rating every week. They want you to search for the cheapest fuel if you need fuel. So a team player, you would uh, search it. If you don't care about your company, don't search it. But if you search it, you try to fuel up in the cheapest place or put enough fuel to get to the cheapest place along your route. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's say you got your destination. It's gonna take a while to load. But okay, we go to the home. We go to where to, points of interest, trucking, fuel. That should be highlighted along the way. It's not highlighted because it hasn't pulled up my trip yet. And also, if I do it right now after it pulls it up, Usually, it won't get highlighted. I have to drive a little bit. I have to get out of this um, customer, out onto the highway, onto my route. And then I can pull over and do all those little highlighted boxes and come to this, and this will be highlighted. And I click on it, it'll show me all the stops along the way of Pilot Flying J and the prices and how far it is. So, you're gonna pick the cheapest fuel, try to fuel it there if needed, and try to save Martin some money. We'll get back to you on delivery. Actually, we'll get back to you if I can find fuel along the way, because I am going to fuel up. I already know where it is, but you have to search it, because it records your searches, which gives you a better rating. It doesn't get you any extra bonus, but it shows you're a team player with Martin. Maybe they appreciate it. Maybe they'll give you a bonus sometime. I don't know. But I just do it, because I want to help out my company. And that's it for now.